going on, my dudes? Mr. Sandman is signing back in for 2015. Welcome, everybody, to the goddamn show. I want to thank all my subs for riding with the kids for, um, last year and the years before that. You know what I'm saying? More videos to come. I'm going to try to really be consistent with this, um, with the Sandman channel. Just let your boy be busy, you know what I mean? So, just try to, you know, bear with your boy. And plus, I don't have a camera. I'm trying to get my camera. That's one of the things I, I definitely got to get. So, I can, um, when I go to my, like, events and stuff like that, I can, you know, upload footage so y'all can see, you know, you, you're truly on stage and other um, Bronx artists on stage doing what they do. Now, last year, well, matter of fact, this year, earlier this year, uh, um, I did a, a best and worst moments of TNA and um, WWE for 2013. So now this year, it's only right for me to talk about it for 2014. I'm going to start off with, with TNA first. This, the best moments. I'm going to do the best moments first. Number one, Bobby Lashley winning the heavyweight title. Like I said, you know, you know, I was told my comrades and all that. We all agreed that's one of the best moments TNA has ever had. You know, having a black heavyweight champion, and he was legit. He wasn't chucking and jiving, dancing, and all those types of bullshit, acting like a cool. He was a straight up destroyer. He didn't run from nobody. He was fighting anybody and anybody, you know, taking motherfuckers out clean. He ain't cheat or nothing like that. He, you know what I'm saying? He was just taking motherfuckers out. Legitimate title reign. I loved it, you know. It was a nice, it was it was real lengthy. I think he had it for like five months, six months, I think. Somewhere around the, the numbers, but he had it for a very long time. You know, and I got to see him live. In New York, when he went when he went to the Hammerstein Brawl Room to um, defend the title against this dude Austin Aries, so no, excuse me, not Austin Aries, um, Bobby Roode. Sorry about that. So it was it was definitely a great reign. You know, I, I enjoyed it. Number two, uh, Bully Ray put Dixie Carter through a table. You you know I had to throw that on there. You know what I'm saying? Like about time somebody shut that bitch up. Put her ass through a fucking table, and it happened in the right place, in the you know the home of hardcore, other than Philly, you know New York City, you know what I'm saying? Especially in the Hammerstein Ballroom, that's where ECW really made a name for themselves. So what better place to do it? She even had you know motherfuckers trying to um protect her like you know like Rhino and EC3, Rockstar Spud, shit, King Mo. She even brought back fucking them. <laughs> I think it was Ezekiel Jackson and, and Snitsky and all that. Even brought them back, and she still ended up going to the table. So, you know, kudos to Bully Ray. Definitely enjoyed that moment. I just wish I was there to see that. Number three, MVP coming to TNA with the American Wolves. Now, um, like I said from before, um, I didn't really like the vignettes and shit of what the Wolves is cutting, but... It, it, I guess it all it all led to something good because um nobody didn't really know MVP was gonna show up you know what I mean they just kept on saying like uh, there's the new investor there's a new investor coming to TNA you know and nobody didn't know everybody was thinking like it was gonna you know Goldberg and all types of bullshit like that everybody you know nobody never think it was gonna be MVP so when MVP finally showed up with the Wolves. Like a package deal that was, you know, it was definitely a, a somewhat of a markout moment, and especially nobody ain't see um, this new MVP on American television for for a minute, so it was refreshing. And then after that, you know, it shifted to TNA in, in the right in the right way, you know, like it, the shows actually better uh, when um, MVP and the Wolves showed up and shit. You know, it, it was a, you know, it was. Breath of fresh air from the fucking Hogan Bischoff nonsense. Number four. TNA coming to NYC and just hitting home runs with their shows. Back to back home runs. Every single show they had in New York City was fucking awesome. 
you know, like, I had a good time, you know, I wish I would have went to more, but I was only able to go to one, you know what I'm saying, um, only thing I like is the fucking security and shit was acting like dickheads, but whatever, still had a good time, they couldn't spoil my fun, you know, um, my lady had my lady had a good time, so I took her. So we both had a good time, and she's not really a TNA fan, so that that says a lot, you know. So kudos for you know TNA practically staying in New York, in New York because they have, they have they're gonna have another show in New York too when they um go on um Destination America. That's gonna take place in New York. So I'm glad they got a uh, but uh, they got a new home. They st they trying to get a new home in New York or whatever. Hopefully they, they'll stay here a lot longer and I can go to some more shows. Number five. The tag team tournament between the Dudley Boys, America Wolves, and the Harleys. Oh man. Now this is what you call fucking like wrestling and hardcore wrestling at the at the best in the best form. You know, cause you got the fast paced the fast paced action with the Wolves and the Hardys, and you got the aggression and brute force of the Dudleys, all wrapped all in one. And and when you mix the tables, that is the chairs into the mix, you already know it's, it's it was just great. You know, I was able to, I was there for um for for the um I think it was their last match when the Wolves finally um they just won the the, the tournament or whatever, and it was it was just great. You know. It's something that they need to put that on DVD. Just that tournament that they had, they need to put that on DVD. I think that one DVD right there would make some fucking bread for them TNA. Now, there's my five best moments for WWE for 2014. Daniel Bryan beating the whole authority, evolution, whatever, at WrestleMania, or WrestleMania 30. Thank God, you know, WWE came to their senses and let this dude shine. Too bad he had to go through fucking hell and high water to finally shine. Fucking WWE acting completely stubborn. And they trying to make it seem like, oh, it's all storylines, all storylines. No, that's bullshit. That shit was not no storyline when he said he was a B-plus player. Them motherfuckers is really believing that shit, you know what I mean? And it is, it is fucking sad, you know, like this dude had to go through all that shit now, he's, you know, he's been out for almost a year because of that shit, you know what I mean, he, he like, he hurt, like, he's, he's hurt, and, you know, he said he's gonna become, he's gonna come back in the Rumble, so, you know, that's good or whatever, I still think it's too soon, but, you know how Vince says, he probably kept forcing him, hey, you gotta come back, you gotta come back, we need you, we gotta come back, fucking bunny hungry Vince, but, overall, that was a good moment, Great mark out moment for uh, me when Daniel Bryan won the strap. Number two. Yeah. I'm going to feel the heat. Bring the heat to me because you already know it's going to be number two. Bum to take a loser to Brock. Yeah. You know I had to put that down there. I know y'all like, you know what? Fuck that. And it's going to stop the video. I don't give a fuck. They already knew I couldn't stand Bum the Taker. And I'm so glad they let a legitimate fighter, a legitimate kick ass, like, bust this dude ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm just so glad that they went down like how it went down. Especially Bum the Taker was looking so fucking sloppy. It was, a, it was time. He was done. You know, like, you know, and it's legitimate because, you know, if it was a real life fight, Brock would kill him. Bum the taker. So it had to go to this dude. A lot of people sit there and say, like, oh, that's not fair because Bum, I mean, this nigga Brock ain't always there. He doesn't really respect the business. Hey, look, he doesn't have to. He's a fucking a special, he's a, he's a special attraction. You know what I'm saying? It's like when fucking Tyson was there. Hey, he's a special attraction. He even fucking wrestled. And he was getting, he, he, he got way more pressed than anybody else in the roster. So fuck that, you know what I mean? Shouts go out to fucking Brock, man. Brock the Conqueror. That's when they gave him that, that moniker. Brock the Conqueror, the Beast and Khan and all that, you know? And like I said, it made sense because in a real life fight, he would wash up Bum the Taker. So kudos go out to him. Number um, three, Seth Rollins turning heel on the shield. 
I say the only reason I say it's the best moment is because they made they right now they use their Seth Rollins perfectly. They make it as due to a superstar the right way, and I could appreciate that. But the reason why he turned on the shield and like the timing was just so dumb because they was beating Evolution in every single match, and then out of nowhere, this dude Seth Rollins just turns on the shield. Like that doesn't make no sense. Why is just gonna have these dudes? Um, the Shield always lose, and then Seth Rollins, you know what I mean, turn on 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 the Shield. I think that was just stupid. But it, the reason why I say it's one of the best moments because you got another, you got a, a, a soon to be top star out of that, and I can appreciate WWE for that. Number four, Ziggler being the sole survivor at the um um at the Survivor Series, and just. Just wiped out three. It was, one, it was like him against three other cats, and and they took all three of them out. You know, with the help of Sting on on um Seth Rollins. It was it came down to him and Seth Rollins, and and then this dude, you know, he won the um the match for some Team Cena, and I'm glad this dude had got to showcase his skills in that type of way in that type of form, like you know and. It's about time for Ziggler to really get be in the main event. Like if he can, if if he improved it right there, then he he's never gonna prove it. You know what I'm saying? Like the proof is right fucking there. How he carried that fucking match, and like and when we was when me and my comrades was all together watching the match, it it got a little it was a little slow at first. He's the one that picked it up and made the shit all exciting, Dolph Ziggler. So 2015, let this dude. Get in the main event and really get a, a some you know what I mean get that fucking shine that he fucking deserves man stop the fucking bullshit with Dolph Ziggler man this dude is really good at and last but certainly not least Sting debuting at Survivor Series for number five all right you know I'm not a real big Sting fan but I'm glad he shows up at WWE. It proves for, proves for a great moment in WWE history. They should really, really fucking capitalize off of this. You know what I mean? Like, they should stop. They, they, this this right here is something like once in a life. This is really called once in a lifetime type of shit. I'm trying to hurry up and, you know, get to the point because my, this shit is about to die. But this is great for TV right here. I just hope WWE capitalize and do the right thing by having Stan come to WWE. He was like the, the only dude that said he would never come to w, WWE, and he finally did. And this is crazy. So they got to do something major with this dude's thing. I hope they right now just, you know, brainstorming and seeing what they can do with Sting in the upcoming future. I know he's going to be at WrestleMania, but it got to be more. It got to be more. Like, this is Sting. You know, even though I'm not really a Sting fan, but this is really big for WWE. Well, those are my best moments for TNA and WWE for um, 2014. I'm going to do another video when this shit charge up. Do another video for the worst moments of the TNA and WWE in 2014. Y'all, this is gonna, this when shit's going to start getting good. Ha! Peace up, motherfuckers. Yeah! <laughs>